All right, welcome, welcome traders. I wanted to make a quick video, sort of like a um, tutorial to show you what I do during my day from when I first wake up to like the end of the day. Um, I usually plan my trades on the weekends a lot of time because that's when I have most of my free time. But when it's not the weekends, I plan it um, after hours or before the market opens to try to really figure out different uh chart setups that I like. So let's get into it. I created a tab on my phone that has specifically all of my stock stuff. I try to keep it nice and neat. I have web pages on here, apps and everything. But the first thing I do when I wake up, my favorite app that I use to source information is investing.com app. It's popping up right now. Investing.com. And when it pops up it has a different a lot of different tabs that you can click on my favorite tab that i look at for the morning is uh right here my futures futures basically um are similar to options options gives the buyer and seller the um obligation i'm sorry the right and not the obligation to execute the contracts and futures is the other way around. Futures, you know, you are obligated to buy price at a specific thing that you te that you set it for. So futures are a great indicator to let you know where price is going at before the market and after the market. Because you got to remember, um, I always preach how all the money is together in different markets. And when I say together, it's the same money in Forex, it's the same money in uh, commodities, it's the same money in stocks. All the markets correspond to each other. No matter, you know, what anyone says, all the markets correspond to each other because um, when you think about it, recently when GameStop was going up, uh, Big Bath and Beyond was going up, that's where the money was. The money was in that specifically. Um, people pumping and dumping and trying to get a part of that. Once that event, it didn't last long, but once it ended, people was looking for their next fix. So they went over to, uh, you say a lot of people start buying Bitcoin again, cryptocurrency. So the money flew over there and the money flew at one point to ETFs like marijuana stocks and things like that. And um, tobacco, so the money fluctuates. It's like a like a wave in the ocean. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, you know, it pulls back, it crashes, it pulls back, it crashes on the shore. You just gotta follow the money. So at the beginning of the day, I always look at my futures to try to follow the money. So a quick thing, um, you see they have it stands for U.S. thirty, like the top thirty companies in the Dow right here. You got US 50, US Tech 100. I'm not going to go over everything, but I kind of just want to get my head around. The, the, the favorite one I look at is my US 500. You know, I look at that and if you turn your phone to the side, you can kind of see how, you know, futures are holding up. On here is cool because you can even draw lines, support and resistant lines yourself and kind of figure out. It looks like, you know, from the chart that tomorrow, I'm making this video. What is it? Thank you very much. It's March the 2nd, 21. And tomorrow, March the 3rd, 21. It looks like this is the 15 minute bar chart right here. If you look on the side, you got the one minute, five minute, 15, 30, hour. Five hours, one day, one week, one month. So you click on each individual tab and you want to get an idea what it's doing. One of these bars represents
resistance right here at this level somewhere. So I still do think it's is a bullish market, but um, eventually it's going to become bearish. Let me click out of that. So once I look at my futures, another thing I like about this app that's cool, I look at my news. News all nice and neat from the latest to the most popular. You know, they give you different tabs. Everything is just super easy on your phone to use. And one of my favorite, favorite things about this app specifically is the calendar. When you look at the calendar, it lets you know news from yesterday, today, tomorrow, this week, next week. You could probably even go further. You can look at uh, dividend calendar, earnings calendar, IPO calendar, holiday calendar. So I look at this and I look at, you know, like I want to see what's going on tomorrow. And, you know, I start with up top. I have it set to show me different things that's going on in different countries. The countries that I want to see. I kind of just want to get an idea of, like I said, money flows everywhere, in and out the country. You you want to get an idea of what other markets is doing as well. You don't have to be specifically focused on it, but you want to get an idea. And um, Okay, so you see right here, if I click this, it also shows you on this the importance of the news. So you got the OPEC meeting right now. Um, and you see it's a it's rated two balls right here. Two out of three. So it lets you know that this is, you know, some news that you may want to look at. You may want to consider what's going on with it. Let me click out. Uh, versus like some news like this about mortgage applications. You see, this is only a one ball, and it lets you know, you know, like the actual forecast and the previous numbers for that. So, you know, you can draw off of that, tap out of it. Um, This week, next month, I just want to get a, a, a full idea on what I'm doing specifically. And, you know, different plays I make want to make. I take note of uh, very important news, like when the Fed speak. When the Fed speak, is always important because people listen when the Fed speak. So that's definitely news that I, you know, rate to be important. And once I looked at my news, I looked at my calendar and I looked at my futures also on here, look at my commodities and everything as well, too. Like I said, this lets me know where the money flowing at. So just this tab alone up top, you can kind of get an idea of how the money is flowing. You can look at stocks. You can set your own stocks on here that you want to look at. These are some of the stocks that I like to look at. It has on here, but most active. You can click the tab. You know, you can play around with the app. Look at a YouTube tutorial on how to use the app, you know, in more detail, whatever, but you see, you can see where the money going at. Stocks, commodity, currency, crypto. It gives you a very, very uh, cool way of looking at it, in my opinion. It's easier than a lot of other apps. So this is my main app that I look at in the morning, investing.com. Let me get out of it. After I look at investing.com, I go to my Weeble. When I open up my Weibo, I click my, let me go back. Open up my Weibo. I go to my positions. I click these three little lines right here. And this shows you my watch list. Everything on here is a watch list that I created. Um, and this right here is a following list. So you can actually, you know, certain watch list is already available on Weibo. You can actually follow it. You know, click on it and see. Like, this is the after hours top gainers. You can just make it your favorite. Once you make it your favorite, you follow it. Now, you ain't have to create it. You just following that. So, a lot of these things I look at and I follow. Um, oh, yeah, and another thing I wanted to point out. A lot of folks don't be talking about 
is my VIX, right? On Weibo, if you type in, if you go to your VIX, V-I-X, and you follow it on the page, hold on, let me see if I can do it right here, because I know that's a big question, V-I-X. I'm going to say exactly how to follow, because I it's took me a minute to do it. All right. So if I go to my market tab, I hit market. I come down to hot ETFs. I click VIX. This little arrow right here, follow. Boom. That's how you do anything that you want to follow. By the way, just to give you a quick insight on that, if I go to most active, you know, you want to click view all. And if I wanted to follow the most active stocks, I could hit, you know, this button and I can select, you know, volume, turnover, right, whatever. And now I'm following the most active. So that's another way to create faster watch lists um, that you can actually watch. And watch list is nothing but your personal preference on things that you like to look at. So let's look at some of my watch lists and see the things that I like to look at. So we go over here. We got my financial sector, utilities. I'm not going to go over everything, but you can just kind of stop the video and watch me scroll down on some of the things I look at. Some of the things I look at. And a lot of stocks share common space in the same sector. So when you look at a stock like Tesla, Tesla is a tech company, but it's also they also sell you know cars. So I have Tesla in my car um, watch list. I have it in my and when I say car specifically, my EV electric vehicle watch list. I have them in my EV watch list. I have them in my uh, tech watch list. I have it in my ATR high uh, average true range watch watch list because it. It's very liquid. There's a lot of liquidity in Tesla. So it doesn't have to be specifically one stock to one watch list. It's just your personal preference. But whenever you do create a watch list, you want to have some depth in your watch list. Like this is my financial watch list right here. You see there's a couple things in there. It's, it's about a, I don't have a count on that, but it's more than 20, 30 stocks in here. And I just keep adding to it. Whenever I find something that's kind of in the financial thing, I put it towards that. You know, same with everything else, utility, electronics. I just put towards that. So in the morning, when I come to my watch list, I want to look at where the money flowing. So if I just swipe to the right, swipe to the left, you know, you can see the change right here. You see red, you see gray. You know, I want to see if it's anything that's giving me a lot of green. Anything that's giving me a lot of red as far as change in price. You know, you look at that. There's one way that I look at to get in a place. I do this and I say, okay, you know, this red, this green, okay, all right. Especially pre-market, 9 a.m., that's a great way to look at it. Just swipe, swipe. So a lot of times when 9 a.m. hit, you'll see the change. You'll see a lot of green over here or a lot of red. And you're like, okay, well, maybe money coming into it, maybe money not coming into it, but let me, you know, investigate, see what's going on. So what I do, a lot of times for me personally, when I'm looking for a stock play, there's a few things that I do. Uh, um, I start out with FANG, F-A-A-N-G. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. I kind of look at these companies because each one of these companies represents a sector in the market. And I want to see what's going on with FANG. I want to see if FANG is in rotation or not. When I say rotation, when something's in rotation, it means money's either flowing in or flowing out. 
So I like to start me personally with like the FANG stocks just to have an idea on what the market is doing because uh, Apple is the biggest company in the world. So I want to see what Apple's doing right now. If I look at Apple, APP, well, right here, I look at my daily chart. I say, okay. And just from looking at my MA lines, okay, you see my blue line is my 100. My purple line is my 10. Okay, I see it's coming up. But it came down a little bit. Okay, that's my daily. I see that price was trending up. It went down. It bounced off of this EMA. I'm sorry, this MA line. It was using this as a resistant at one point, And now we're starting to bounce back up. I look at my weekly for it. Weekly, you get so much of a better picture. You see right here, this green line is my 30 MA. It's... Hit the 30, went, went a little lower with a candle wick, and then bounced up. So now it has possibility to go up to my 10 MA line, which is 131. And the high of today was 128.72. So, like I said, it could go to 131, but we just want to see where it's going to go at. Look at value and everything. I'm basically looking for plays that I can get uh, more meat off the bone with, sort of speak. I can uh, profit more. So Apple right now, for me personally, without me doing too much research on it, it's not looking like a play I want to be a part of right now because I, I don't really see too much going on with Apple. Just off the top. I could be wrong, but just off the top, I want to see something that's noticeable because since we are mobile traders and we're doing everything through our phone, you kind of want to get an eye and be good at spotting things and kind of knowing the, tra tra the trajectory of the market. Jeez, that word was hard to get up. So once you look at, you know, Apple, you look at Facebook, you see Facebook. Okay, so everything so far looked like it ended in red. Remember, these are some of the stronger companies, the more stronger companies in the S&P 500, which we will look at that as well. But I said at the beginning, you know, we are short-term bulls. We're long-term bears right now because I think the market is about to be bullish. I mean, I'm sorry, bearish in the next few months. So I'm trying to decide on what play to get into. Looking at Facebook right now, I see that Facebook ended off in a red day as well. But it's on its 200 MA, MA line right now and it's actually looking like Facebook could be a play to go down look like you can buy puts on it so if you delete this right quick and you just look at pure price action if I had to draw it I had to draw a trend line yeah we could keep it red and the trend line coming down it looks like Facebook mm -hmm. It's basically going down. It looks like it's respecting this MA line of 100. This, M this MA line of 100 is acting as a resistance, a strong resistance. And now you're seeing that price is starting to follow behind it. So Facebook looked like it could be an opportunity by put. But at the same time, you have to consider what you think the overall market is going to do. So us being right now short-term bulls, long-term bears, I believe that Facebook can actually pop up. Although the chart is looking down um, with news of vaccination and stimulus checks and all that, people, I feel like, you know, are going to want to buy more and it's going to cause inflation, which will eventually tank the market that plus a lot of other things like um, my student slash teacher today sent me an article about um, a shortage in chips, semiconductor chips. So things like this, like news that people ain't really talking about, you want to keep note of and you say, okay, in the case of that, that can really tank the market in the long haul. 
So it still can go up. Like you, you respect what the chart is saying. The chart is saying that basically it's bouncing off of this red line that I drew. When you draw trend lines, you want it to touch as many candlesticks as it can possibly touch. So I can actually even draw it closer so you can see it better. A line right here. Or you can draw it up. It's, it's all about zones. That's why I stick to, I call it zones a lot. I can draw another line right here. And this could be my zone right here. This could be my resistance zone. And then I can draw another line right here. Let's make that this color. And this could be my support zone. The lines are super accurate, but I think you get the picture. You just want to basically draw lines or make MA lines that make sense to you. Regardless of what anyone else to say, you know, it can't be right or it can't be wrong. If it's profitable to you, if it's making you a consistent trader, then that's all you need. So let's get out of Facebook. We looked at Apple. We looked at Facebook. Let's look at Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Netflix look like it's going up. It's trending up. Okay. That might be something that you can buy calls on. That might be a good play. You see, like, the next resistant level for that will probably be, like, around here. At 566, so right now price is at 547. You get it now, 566 is probably like the next resistance you'll hit. You look at it from a weekly point of view, because like I said, weekly play out things more to you. You can see so far this week. Oh yeah, this this look like a good play right here. I like I like Netflix. I like Netflix. Um you can see it's been going up. And right here is my, this blue thing is my Fibiachi sequence. We'll get into that, but I'm going to delete my Fibiachi sequence. All that is is uh, retracements. It lets you see pullbacks and all that. But um, if you just look at the MA lines or take the MA lines off for a minute. If you just look at supply and demand. If I draw a horizontal line right here, you can see that price has been supported at this level of about 254. You can look across the cut chart as far as you can. All right, 254, you see price was supported right here. If I draw another horizontal line right here, make this red, you can see that price was resistance right here. It'll come up, it'll bounce, go down, come up, bounce, go down. Came up this time, broke the resistance even more, dipped down, but didn't dip down as much, made this new support. Let's draw another horizontal line. Made this new support right here. And you can see that it's been respecting the support as well in other points of it. Once it made the support, it came up, it bounced, and that was trending up. Draw a trend line. Let's make this black. You can see it's been trending up, right? It's trending up. It's making basically... Higher highs and lower highs. That's good to see. But you can see also that the ceiling of it is about right here. And right here. That's going to be the zone. Right? So it's in that zone of a breakout. You see like this, this, like this wedge. 
triangle I just drew, you see price going up, going up, going up, going up. Right now, it was in a real uh, zone where a lot of selling goes on. You can see price came up in here, sold off heavy. Remember, each, in that, each individual candlestick for this one represents a week. You see price came up, sold out on that. Price came up, sold down, price came up. But price has been continuously to creep up. And you can even draw another trend line if you feel comfortable. Draw as many trend lines as you want. The show right here, this is another. This is another support zone right here. Right? Boom. Another support. So you say to yourself, if price come back down and dips, it'll hit my second support around like right here. And then you say, well, it's been touching these lines. Now, it's not 100%, but that's what you want to look at. Nothing's ever 100%. You just want to gather as much information and feel comfortable with your trade. So Netflix is a good trade to get into because you can see so far this week. And then, you know, it's at the high. Well, actually, it beat the high. The high of last week was um, 556.85. The high of this week so far is 556.99. So it beat it by a bit, and it's still climbing. So when I see stuff like this, I think that they can have a, a major breakout on the upside of things. So Netflix will be a go. I'll put Netflix on my watch list. And then, you know, we'll go to Google and everything else. But for the purpose of this video, we ain't going to do all that. Um... But another thing I like to look at before we get out of this, I want to look at SPY, right? And SPY is pretty much doing the same thing that Netflix is doing. That's funny. SPY is doing the same thing that Netflix is doing. If I compare, if you hit this little tab right here, you go to dual charts and show you your most recent history. If I hit Netflix... You can do a split screen on the two stocks. And you can see that both of them is at a level right now. A level of that it can actually break up or break down. But like I said, I think the stimulus check and, you know, other news of the vaccine, you know, they probably come out and say that the vaccine, you know, working, doing this, whatever the situation is. I think it's going to promote people to actually spend a little bit more money. Because everybody can make money in the bull market. Everybody want to make money in the bull market. It's just, you know, when the market turn bearish, people become afraid and everything. So I think uh, comparing it to my SPY, and then you click out. I think SPY right now was still on an uptrend, as you can see. Draw that down. And like I said, people, these are like very loose lines. This is zones. You know what I mean? You can draw a horizontal line right here. Because you see this was like previous support and resistance. And right now it was on that support. Right? It's on that support right now. You can draw another horizontal line. This would be the resistance. Like I said, you want the most candlesticks to touch the line. And it's probably going to bounce on this. Uh, probably bounce in this range between... 392 and 386 and if it comes down I'm expecting it to come down and touch this black line about right here probably a fall to like 383 or something like that or you know so it'll probably bounce back and forth and if it breaks out it can go to the highest so that's the way I look at it of course you know you guys can hit me up with any questions this is like a tutorial video but once I do that I do everything then I say we said that uh Netflix that was the chart that we like, right? NFLX. I then go to my Robin Hood. Or whatever you trade with. It doesn't matter. Right? Right now, I got about 200 in there that I'm playing with. Boom. If I go to my Netflix... We said that we like the chart from looking at my Weeble. 
We like the weekly. We like what it's doing. I'm going to add this to my hot watch list. If you click the arrow up top, you got my hot picks. Save. Boom. At the beginning of the Robin Hood. Let's see, 114. Well, I'm down on everything right now for the most part. That's all good. I go to my hot picks. And these are some of the hot stocks I've been looking at over the week. Um, you know, you can freeze and look at it. Netflix, uh, uh, which is a media thing. I got oil in here I was looking at. I got fast food. I got trucks. I got marijuana stocks. A lot of things I was looking at for different reasons. But once I create this watch list, this hot pick watch list, it's different than my just regular watch list of a thousand different stocks on here. That let me know like the, the best focus uh, charts that I'm looking at. You know? So since we sticking with Netflix, I want to go back over to Netflix and kind of dive a little more deep into it right fast. So if I look at Netflix, right, I want to come down. I want to look at my average value. My average value for Netflix is uh, about $4.60 million on the Weibo app. Today it was trading at $3.4 million. Right, I want to identify my huge candlesticks of selling and buying. Now, I'm not going to use no MA line or nothing on this. We're going to do strictly supply and demand. I want to look at my huge candlesticks. So from looking at my huge candlesticks right now, I'm looking at one right here, two right here, three right here. And this was a gap up. You can count this as well if you want because it gapped up. It gapped up overnight to a very huge price. So earnings came up. You see that E right there? That stands for earnings. Earnings were great. It came up and it went down, right? So like I said, if we know our average volume is uh, 4.6, you want to see when it gapped up, where was it at? The volume right now was, at, was when it gapped up was 11.62. When it actually hit that high, it was at 32. It was at 11 the next day. 7, 7, 8. So it was, it's was. it been trading high volume for a while. And I keep going back. Always remind yourself what the average volume is. The average volume is 4. So that means there's a lot of supply and demand going on. Right? So you see 4, 3, 3, 5, 2, 2, 3, uh, you can look, look, look. Let's go to the more recent thing. Four, three, four, three, three. So it's been kind of touching the average volume. And you can see the last big candlestick was 4.13, which is right on it. But the last real big one was 8.6, doubled at four. You understand what I'm saying? So when you look at the volume, you can see that it made a power move up and it made a power move down. So you see both buyers and sellers both plead their case. It's like when you debate. Both sides plead their case. You know we want it up. No, we want it down. We want it up. Now you want it down. But now the most important thing you look at, support and resistant lines, right? So imagine both parties saying we want it up, we want it down, whatever the situation is. They got it down all right, but they got it down to the support line right here. And like I said, you can draw zones, as many lines as you want, to get an idea. You see that when price hit about this area right here, so those two lines that I drew is true to the whole chart that I'm looking at so far. If I zoom out, go far back as I can, you can see that those two lines are true to price action because you can see that these lines act as support and resistance. It's like the fucking uh, equator on Earth, you know, the belt. And when stocks cross this belt, when stock price cross this belt, when price action cross this belt, 
is either going up or it's getting stuck and coming down. You see right here, it went up, it went up, came down, it consolidated, it found new support and resistance, it came up, it came up. So every time it's in this little bubble right here, you can see that it shot up like a vacuum cleaner. Like whatever, whenever it gets to this, just looking at the stock, looking at this chart, whenever price is in this range right here, it either shoots up and comes down. When it's an uptrend, it shoots up past that and comes down. Uptrend, shoots up past that and come down. Downtrend, it comes up, hits this. This is the resistance at this point, and it comes back down. Uptrend, hits this, resistance come back down. Past this, shoots up, come back down. You can see it's a, it's a pattern, right? So you get to this point right here, and you see, okay, price went down, touched my zone at least twice. One, two, with heavy volume, right? Now it's bouncing up. When it's bouncing up, you want price to clear the previous high big candle that you see. So this is the previous high big candle that you see. You can count this. You can count this, right? Mind you, this is on a weekly chart. No, I'm sorry. This is a daily chart. You can count this. You can count that. You can draw another line saying, let me make this purple, saying price right now is at a key Resistant level. You can draw a bunch of resistant lines. However many you want to draw, zones, whatever. So you can say it's true that if price breaks, because you can see this is a true resistant. You can see price came up to these lines and people started selling. Came up, hit it, sold. Came up, hit it, sold. So it was coming up again, right? So you could say that if it's possible, if I get into this stock right now at uh, $549.60, right? I can possibly sell it for $563. $563 minus $549. 563 minus 549, $14. That's $14 right there. And on the option, that 14 enhance your probability a lot stronger. That's on a daily chart we're looking at. We want to look at it from daily and weekly. This is daily price action, what we see. Now let's look at the weekly, right? We look at the weekly, we say, oh shit. My support which is my black line, last week, it touched and tested my support right here. You can see last week it came down, it touched, it tested out my support, and now it was bouncing up. Now it was hitting my resistance already. The week practically just started, and it's hitting my resistance already. I like that. So remember we said 563, and you look at it from a weekly, you say, okay, well, 563 right here, it got the 563 right here. It got the 505, 59, okay. It got the 563 past 5, okay. Maybe I can get more money from it because it's it's hitting it. You know what I mean? It's still in the uptrend. Make that yellow. It's still in the uptrend right now. And it's hitting it. It's creating a little wedge. And when stocks, when uh, price action creates wedges like this, usually it's a pop at the end of it. It's a pop up or pop down. But we're going to put, make option plays on the probability of that is going to go up because what we see right here. So with all that, like I said, now we said, okay, we're getting at a red day. Today, well, yeah, today was a red day. Today would have been a great day to get into it if you're feeling good about it, you know. Hold on to it because the probability of you getting $14 or 
something close to, you know, 10, 11, whatever, you could double your money trading options. So that's pretty much a quick tutorial. I won't make the video too long. I'll make a separate video explaining options, but that's kind of how I get into it and look at it. So any questions, just hit me up.